John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. This is the most important agenda item. We're talking about a woman who was raped just recently, because the council action was on August 28th of, of last year. She was raped at UCLA. She was beaten and raped. And now, no one... Meanwhile, you have just told uh, Switzerland, come here. We have a crime-free campus for you. Meanwhile, you're offering $50,000 for any information leading to the arrest of the UCLA rapist. And what are you getting? Absolutely nothing, because they fear anybody who saw it happen on campus. This didn't happen uh, in, in the, on the sidewalk. This happened in a campus. The police are worthless. Uh, the UCLA police are worthless. Okay, one minute only, please. No, you know what? I'll take my two minutes. I'll take my two minutes. This item says for the rape of a female university student. Well, the question is, which incident are you talking about? Which campus are you talking about? Because I don't know if you guys saw the news last night, but last night the UCLA police did arrest a suspect for a rape in a coffee shop in Westwood. So the question is, is this reward for that arrest from last night? I think before you start awarding these or renewing these rewards, you should know what's going on in current events. So before you vote on it, tell us, is this reward pertaining to the arrest last night in Westwood at a coffee shop? That's the problem with these vaguely written pieces. It doesn't work. You, uh, is it for this or is it for a rape at another campus? And we know that there are rapes of female students at other college campuses in Northridge, at USC. Is this for that? Is this for the Westwood one? And fuck Jane Englander in the ass. Um, you know what? You are um, rude, crude, and socially unacceptable. So I would suggest you might want to just go back and uh, seek some help. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Hey, and you know what? If you clap again and you're going to disrupt this meeting, and if you go off topic and say anything else and you attack any of our families personally and you want to make it personal, I'm going to ask the guards to escort you out. Um, first, first Amendment notwithstanding. Okay, you just laughed and I said, you know what? You're calling out. So one more outburst. One more outburst. And we're going to ask you, to, we're going to dismiss you from the meeting. Did you want to say something else? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Ma'am? Uh, I, I want to just remind everyone that unsolved rape crimes uh, tend to result in more rapes because rapists that get away with rape, rape again. Um, I remember when the LAPD had uh, a great big uh, exhibit there about all the back backlog of rape cases and all the unsolved rape cases here. And often when you find a rapist, you will find that they have raped multiple women. So what I think it, we need is an approach to this. I, I don't know how to react to the amount of money or any of that. I just think it needs a, 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 a deeper look and a prioritizing because violent crimes and rape is a violent crime. Whether you kill a person or you don't, it's violent. Thank you. Thank you. Donna Perriman, women when, when, would be raped if they had the right to carry their own firearms. It would be... Nothing ever really gets take um, that. Nothing gets better for that s person that got raped. If you know, I realize there's not too many women on the uh, city council, but they're only uh, 
um, Martinez. It's, uh, uh, I wish there were more women because uh, this is really a um, look very much a woman's issue because not too many men get raped. So we had the right to be uh, caring. I hope people are hearing me because I think it's all right. My mic went down. Anyway, uh, we had the right to carry so we can protect ourselves. And uh, so these rapes won't happen. I like they have no rape at all. And so we won't need a reward. Bye. You know, we're so infested with all these violent people out there now who want to commit these uh, terrible things to women because that seems to be the thing that men like to do. They like to so make women like look like piece of dirt and then they want to take away the firearms and we need to have them to protect ourselves from these rapists and murderers. It's about time that California changes the law so that we can have these rights to protect us us women, it's about time women stand up and stop being a victim and say that's enough, enough is enough from these rapists and murderers who try to, to, to hurt women and other young kids and minorities. We need to stop this injustice that's going on here. We need to stop this. We can't have this there, kids. I have a 22-year-old. I don't want her attacked and raped. She's going to Boston. I don't want her hurt. So, folks, hear me. We need to have a right to have our guns to protect ourselves from these rapists once and for all. That's it. Thank you. And my one minute. That was two minutes, ma'am. Thank you. You're done. All right. So, excuse me. Um, Wayne, you just yelled out again. So that's disrupting the meeting. I've warned you already once. So have a nice weekend. Bye. We'll see you next week. Dan, did you Daniel, did you want to say something too? I, I hear you talking over there too. Did you do you want to disrupt the meeting? Okay. Well, we're going to hold off. We're actually now waiting um, and disrupting the meeting while we're waiting for Wayne to gather his belongings and um, and be escorted out because he's continuously disrupting this meeting and he's been warned on numerous occasions. We'll continue to wait. Mr. Kretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Just because uh, uh, previous speakers are just making stuff up, I just wanted to say for the record, this did not take place at UCLA. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, and so with that, we'll go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, next item, please. Item 9, called Special for Cards. Okay, Sean. I'm not supporting. Thank you, Eric. You're up. Yes, Eric, you. Yes, Eric, it's you. The same Eric that fills out a card on every single item. That's you, yes. Thank you. S Time is yours. I, this is my second item today, and my name is Eric Previn. And your name is Mitch, but we're not on a first name basis, so in the future just call my name. Thank you. And don't disrupt the meeting. This is thank you, Eric. Thank you to Mr. Blumenfield uh, once again uh, for all of the work he has been doing for the Lowy family, who are based in Australia, and uh, run what I can only describe as a really substantial um, mall business. They have 38 malls in America. They um, recently put one in, and as we all know, in Topanga, uh, down, uh, over by the Warner Center, and it's, uh, it's near a traffic transit corridor. And those of us who are historians know that the Huntingtons were smart, too, because they figured out if you get near the railway, guess what? You're going to get rich. So 
these guys have moved their mall uh, from the rack, where I obviously was doing my uh, wardrobing, um, which has turned into a dismal ghost town. And this is um, the sad part of this otherwise exciting story, because what we're doing at this item is we're bringing in RSG. Now, the good news is, is I mean, RSJ. RSJ uh, do a fantastic job of making sure the numbers add up. Um, they are being paid, unfortunately, by Westfield, which has been the subject of my ire, because you know, I understand we want, we don't want to spend city resources on that kind of thing because we're, they're going to be getting the benefit. But if we allow them to pay the guy who's assessing the financials, well, of course, uh, you know, you work for who you, I mean, except for in this or organization where you would technically work for the public but have been working for others, this is the others. So that's the problem here. And what I would ask is, is that we thank RSJ for their earlier consulting work, but do it something different and find a firm that has not been so mired in the financials of this particular group and is now being paid by this particular group, even though that is an old ideation that works very well. Hey, we're going to fix the curb, give us an extra 30 grand, we'll get you through all the line ahead of all the public. These guys have a lot of money. The Lowy's, by the way, should not be impugned in any way for what they're doing because they are very effective. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Joanne? Item nine. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was on. We're going to general public. Oh, that was. That concludes all the speaker cards for that item. And seeing nobody on the queue, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. All right. Now we'll go. I believe that uh, concludes the agenda. We'll go ahead and to go into general public comment. Uh, I will remind everybody that general public comment doesn't necessarily mean anything you wish to speak about. It's for items that are only under the purview of the Los Angeles City Council as pertaining to the rules of this body. Um, if you are off topic on general public comment, you'll forfeit your time. Thank you very much. Um, and that means anything off topic. It's staying within only the purview specifically of the Los Angeles City Council. Joanne? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Joanne Yovanek Gard from West Hills Neighborhood Council, and I'm also a budget advocate. I just, one little thing, I wanted to say that we in West Hills agree with finding existing venues for the 2024 Olympics. So I just want to get that out of the way. My big concern is the um, Aliso Canyon. And there are 222 whales there. Almost half of them are over 50 years old. Most of those, a significant number, do not have current safety valves. This presents a big hazard for the city, for the North Valley, our district. And I know, you know, we're in West Hills, but I live north of Roscoe, and there are times that the gas smell permeates my house. And I'm concerned about that. I have four grandbabies living with me. Okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joan. Mark Morris. Good morning. Hi, good morning. My name is Mark Morris. I'm uh, vice president of Save Porter Ranch, a uh, uh, group in the uh, Porter Ranch area that has existed for over two years. Uh, addressing environmental issues and this gas leak uh, is uh, terrible and it's requiring certain types of uh, fixes that um, can uh, be done on the state level with the support of the LA City Council I'm sp speaking specifically about Senate Bill 380 which was crafted by uh, Senator Pavley which would ask for a, a, a moratorium on any uh, injection of gas or any production of gas in that area until everything is uh, finished, everything is uh, secured, and Dogger knows what's going on. So I'm here to ask the City Council if you could please write a letter of support for this SB 380 uh, in a resolution showing endorsement. Thank you. Great. No, thank you very much. Candido. Hold my time, Mr. President. Hold my time. Thank you, Mr. President. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning. Candido Maris. Proud, proud, super proud resident of the 12th District. And I, I want to thank the council uh, for being here today and for supporting us in, 
in the 12th district. I'm here because I want to thank your uh, your staff, Mr. Englinger. Uh, they have returned calls. They, they're doing everything possible to help those of us in the Porter Ranch community. Um, I had four uh, company officials from the gas company come to my home to see the situation on Tuesday. Uh, and they're doing everything they can. But uh, if it weren't for your office and the things that you are doing there, uh, I don't know if it would be uh, going as well. But uh, that's something you have done all your life. And, uh, you know, somebody might here might say that I'm kissing butt. I never kiss butt. But I do like, you, you know you what? If you want, some, some, is there a laugh over there? But sometimes, you know, this has gotten out of control. This has gotten out of control what's happening here. I can, I should be able to come here and thank my councilman for doing a great job. And I should be able to criticize those of you who don't do your job. But you, sir, have done a wonderful job, and you've done it with the YMCA, the Jeopardy program, thank you. all of them. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you, Candido. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sean. We need to fix our sidewalks. We need to trim our trees. We need to do everything to the city. And you need to fix the sidewalks. Uh, want to extend an invitation to to hear my choir one day, the council people. Thank you. Thank you very much. James? Hi, I'm James Arias. Good morning. Um, I'm from Pacoima, California, and I need to uh, talk to the council about um, illegal vending in my area. It's uh, in a residential area. There's other businesses that sell the same thing that they do, and they're legitimate businesses, and it affects the community um, because of public safety. You know, they stop in the middle of the street. Also, our parks have um, been affected by the illegal vending, and they also use the park as their parking <laughs> So um, that's all I wanted to make a comment about. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very No, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Walsh. Which one? Did I just quote? What is that like? Oh, so. <coughs> John Walsh at org. Okay, we had a rape. There's a $50,000 reward. Uh, we're told where the rape didn't occur at UCLA. The rape that was arrested yesterday was not the rape that happened here. Maybe Mr. Caretsu will tell us where the goddamn rape occurred. How can you that offer fifty thousand dollars? That, that was on an agenda item to speak about, not on general public comment. The issue of rewards. If you are going to issue a reward of fifty thousand dollars for any crime, you must tell us where the crime occurred. The reason you will not tell us where the crime occurred is it might hurt your chances for the Olympics. I'm again asking, you are, is there anybody up here who will tell us where the damn rape occurred? No, no. Joe Vitti, uh, Joe, you can just, all right. morning. You just got the cord. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, my name is Joe Vitti. I'm president of Valley Vote. And um, the Valley Vote Executive Committee supports Councilmember Council Fuente's motion calling for a 2016 ballot measure to restructure the DWP. He calls for replacing the Volunteer Board of Water and Power Commissions with a full-time professional paid board members. This proposal is essentially the same as that of a recommendation of the LA 2020 Commission report, A Time for Action. Uh, also, we also agree with Councilman, Councilman Fuentes. He states it would be irresponsible of us to approve a rate increase without addressing the need for critical governance reform at the department. One of uh, LA Controller Ron Galpin's priorities has been to make the Department of War and Power more uh, uh, responsible and transparent to ratepayers. Ron found the average wage increase for the DW, DWP workers was 20% greater than LA city workers. All right, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Ms. Fogler? Oh, 
Okay, what happened in San Bernardino, I don't want happening down here in my neighborhood here in the valley, San Fernando Valley. So we need to be aware that we need to be, uh, that we need to make sure that Washington knows where Los Angeles stands, that we're not going to allow these terrorists coming in here and hurting us here in the San Fernando Valley. And I need this open so we can keep this being addressed. Now, uh, the video conference needs to be opened down here in Van Nuys so we can keep talking about that we don't want the terrorism here in the San Fernando Valley and Obama needs to know that. You need to send a message to him. We don't want it here. And we need to tell the Democrats and Hillary that if we need to have the Republicans take over so that they don't bring the terrorism here into Los Angeles. We want to fight them over there, not here. So I want the Democrats to know we don't want the terrorists to come here to Los Angeles. And I want to let the Jews know that they're, we're on borrowed time now. We may have to return to Thank you very much, Israel. Ms. Perlman. Okay. No on England or for supervisor. Please vote. Don't again, vote for again, him. Again, okay. Ma anyway, items that are under this it. purview of this council. It's not just any general public okay. items that are under purview of this council only. Okay, I'm, let me go back. We'll go back to the rules. Okay, we've, okay. We've been very we, lenient with the rules. I'm going to set your clock over. Okay, good. Okay, and it's a warning to anybody else. Okay. If you go outside of anything that's outside of the purview of this body, you're going to forfeit your time. But I'm going to be generous with you because I know you know the rules, but I'm going to let everybody else know. Okay. That's the last warning. Thank you. All right. Okay, okay, we need to bring back uh, Van Nuys video conferencing and make public comment back to two minutes. Any, any uh, less is not fair. Uh, Los Angeles, be very careful when you vote in California election. Hel Hillary will have California, Los Angeles destroyed and won't take terror seriously. Hillary, Obama, and the Democrats uh, won't, uh, uh, don't believe in fighting with ISIS. Jews, be ready to leave is uh, to leave and go back to Israel because you know if we have to be able to take care of the um, terrorist um, that may come over here. North Korea could send something over here and send a bomb over to us, or I um, I'm not sure if Iran can. So um, we have to be able to. Los Angeles has to be very concerned about what happens in the rest of the country. We are not in a bubble. So what happens in the election is very important. What happens in the other part of the world does matter. Thank you Thank very you. much. Ms. Sarnoff. Well, it's been a while since I heard the 2020 commission uh, mentioned, but I uh, attended uh, a lot of those meetings, as Mr. Huizar knows. <laughs> um, I, I want to bring your attention to the fact that in the last two days in the L.A. Times, uh, the headlines read, Utility Facing Charges in Gas Link <coughs> Leak. Uh, I wish you would stop calling it a leak when you talk about Porter Ranch. It's, I agree with the people that have talked before and said it's a geyser. Um, another article is on the overhaul of the state utilities panel saw. Uh, this is relating to Porter Ranch and Aliso Canyon. And I want to ask one question, and that is, how close is the New Hall Ranch project? And it's Santa Clarita Valley, and it's been sort of approved by the L.A. County Board of Supervisors years ago, and it comes back up, and I understand it's being fast-tracked right now, and I think... We need information on that, and I think... Great, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Eric? That's you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, uh, Mr. Englander. It is Eric Previn. Uh, please use my full name. Nothing personal there. Uh, David Rue is a great man, and I would just like to say thank you for addressing 
the question that came up. But it is noted that the $137,500 refund was uh, to the Toluca Estates Group who hire private security. That is not what I would describe as a reflection of all of CD4. So thank you for your uh, help on that. Um, and by the way, if we have an ethics question, Mr. Englander, and you should stay out of this, obviously Anna DeHaan, who is a NBC Universal government helper and ethics commissioner, could help with that. So thank you. Um, Today, the YMCA came up, and I am a 31-year veteran of that group. I Actually, I'm, I go back further. I'm 40. So when I was seven years old, I was a YMCA guy. I still am, and I love the place. Uh, they got to stay out of politics, though, sir, because you gave them 250000 Martinez gets money from all these guys. It's not appropriate. Mid-Valley's terrific. They're really helping. They need to work on the field nearby, though. But in, uh, in my district at North Hollywood, we are the poor little stepchild. We get nothing. You, sir, have a – you could have, like, the whole family in a big hot tub. Very Thank you nice very place. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Dan? Stay on items under this purview. Council members, we had a little lesson in the First Amendment today. Two weeks ago today, you lost my and only my and all of my speaker cards. Officer Duarte knew that he took them. You didn't make an effort to go find them. And I gave Mr. Wesson and Mr. Englander ample, ample opportunity to simply say, I am sorry, and you never did. Because you ran over my rights, I decided to today run over your humanity and the humanity of other public figures. For Mr. Englander to have experienced this and then say First Amendment notwithstanding suggests that the lesson wasn't learned. It, I took no joy in today. But you have to learn how to say you're sorry, and as soon as you do, this will stop. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So with that, that concludes uh, general public comment, and uh, we have items for posting and referral. We'll consider those posted and referred. And do we have any announcements, colleagues? Seeing none, do we have any adjourning motions? We, we do have one. So we're going to ask everybody in council chambers, everybody to stand out of respect for those who have passed before us. We're asking everybody in council chambers to please stand. It's, it's your right not to if you choose not to. And uh, if you choose not to, I'm sure that no one would stand for you. Okay. Um, Mr. harris -Dawson. Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask members to join me in adjourning uh, in the memory of Maurice White today. Uh, in keeping with the number of rock and roll uh, legends that we've lost during this uh, past month uh, that Mr. Kretz has been uh, bringing to us, uh, Maurice White is the leader of the what many people call the best band ever assembled, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, he is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Rock, Rock, Hall of Fame, and Earth, Wind, and Fire is a member of the Vocal Group's uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, just a quick list of the people that he either wrote for, produced, or played on their albums. Minnie Ripperton, Barbara Streisand, he founded and helped produce The Emotions. Neil Diamond, Etta James, he played drums with Ramsey Lewis, drums with Muddy Waters, The Impressions, Buddy Guy, and uh, Barry Manilow. Uh, Maurice uh, is resting in peace after a 20-year battle with Parkinson's disease. Uh, he passed away peacefully this past Tuesday here in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Mr. Kretz. Uh, if I could just add one fun, obscure thing. Uh, he moved to Los Angeles in 1969 to uh, uh, form his group, the Salty Peppers which never went anywhere. They changed the name to Earth, Wind, and Fire, and they were immediately uh, an amazing hit. A little salt and pepper did you later, right? <laughs> yes, they did. Fascinating. Mr. Cedillo. Uh, first saw Maurice White at the... Um, on, what is that place called? No. 1972 as an opening act... As an opening act, close, close, as an opening act for uh, Tower of Power. Wow. And uh, imagine that at the Palladium, at the Palladium in 1972. Um, it's okay. <laughs> wow, 
1972, they walked out, smoke filled the whole stage, and then uh, they just started with all the uh, kind of uh, authentic instruments that they would roll out with. Anyway, so, and I'm sure at that time, um, Bradley Bagasau, who was a great leader in the Filipino community, uh, born in Los Angeles in 1950, uh, son of a Filipino immigrant, one of the first Filipino immigrants in California, and uh, son of a, a woman who had relocated from rural Ohio, uh, both, uh, and it, it's interesting because there was a period where Filipinos could not marry uh, in California. And it's important that we recognize that history. Uh, and Bradley was part of that. And he was a graduate of Venice High School, uh, attended uh, UCLA, advanced degree in cultural, uh, cultural anthropology, uh, worked at UCLA and worked in helping f uh, found the uh, Asian American Studies uh, in Southern California, also at Cal State Long Beach, where he mentored an array of people. Uh, Public Works Commissioner Joel Asinto was one of his uh, protégés, as was my staff person, uh, Mel uh, Iloman uh, and Tony Ricasso were both uh, protégés of him. Uh, Mark Polito is also one who considers him uh, his mentor. He was a, uh, uh, one of the best known um, uh, authorities on the indigenous cultures of the Philippines and traveled um, through the 70s into the Philippines, a champion for all causes, um, trying to move the Filipino community uh, forward, and was also uh, noteworthy in his tremendous uh, work as a, a case management worker when all those uh, people were uh, in slavery in El Monte. Those people in 1996, uh, a whole group of women who were uh, locked up from uh, Thailand. Uh, when they were released, they needed support how to integrate back into the community. And he was their caseworker. And they, 20 years later, continued uh, to love him. Uh, an, a giant, a great American. Uh, he was one of the... Um, founders of many of the Filipino-American groups and was uh, on the Pacific Asian Drug and Alcohol Program and recently served as the CEO of the Asian Rehabilitation Services working with the disabled. Um, he has a foundation that uh, was recently uh, created um, and he is preceded in death by his father, Benjamin Bagasau. Uh, his mother, Mary, that's the foundation that exists. His sister, Paula, who worked for President Clinton, uh, and his sister, Anne. His sister, Paula, is also uh, married to Tony Butka, who is a great uh, champion for workers uh, in this community, uh, with great regret the passing of Bradley uh, Bagasau. Uh, thank you very much. Seeing uh, no other adjourning motions, this council is adjourned. Have a nice weekend. Be safe.